Hi, my name is Alessandro and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's video was inspired by one of my favorite beauty content creators here on YouTube. Her name is Lauren Mays Beauty. The reason why this video idea was really interesting to me is because I personally never check for the cell section on Sephora. And that is not because I'm trying to be bougie and I don't shop sale stuff, no. That is because I feel like when something goes on sale, it's on sale for a reason. I don't think brands are out here trying to make our day. I think they are just trying to get rid of products that are not selling well. That is why I just don't check the sale section. Also, I feel like a lot of these products on sale, if they weren't on sale, I wouldn't be checking for them. And the only reason why I consider buying them is because they're cheaper. So let's get into this video and start talking about some products that caught my eye and some that I obviously knew why they were on sale. Now, Sephora's sell section was not too bad, to be quite honest. There were some hits, some stuff that really caught my eye. And then there were some products that, like I said, they were just trying to get rid of. I'm not gonna lie, I actually bought one of these products. I did. So the first thing that caught my attention is this Kaja Roller Glow On Highlighting Balm. Now, I know why this thing went on sale. It is because it is just so gimmicky. Who would apply any makeup product with a like paint roller? like? I feel that that does not like blend out product right. I feel like whatever you place on is just kind of sitting where you went in with the roller and then you're gonna have to go in and blend it out either with a beauty blender or a brush. Product wise though, I feel like this is something that I might like. It's a highlighting balm, so like a cream product. I love cream products, so that is something that interests me, but I don't know, I don't really check for Kaja and this package is gimmicky and I feel like I could find a better just balm or cream highlighter. So that is a total pass for me. Okay, next thing is this Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Foil Freestyle Highlighter Palette. I don't know. Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter Formula. I don't know how good it is. I've heard some buzz about it, but this highlighter palette, it's not wearable. It looks almost like an eyeshadow palette. Like this is a better eyeshadow palette than a highlighter palette to be quite honest. Because half of the colors, the blue, the light purple, the minty blue, and the gray are not wearable highlighters. I don't think color highlighters should be a thing because they don't really highlight they kind of just sit on your face and they will only look good from like to the side profile when the light is hitting other than that you'll be able to just see like a cast of where that highlight is and i don't think that's cute the only three shades that i feel are cute here are the bottom three i feel like those would go good with deeper skin tones but i don't think it's worth it going in and spending your money just for three shades. The other colors though are pretty eyeshadow shades, but there's nothing I don't already have in my makeup collection. Let's talk about another Fenty Beauty product. This is their Moroccan Spice Eyeshadow Palette. I've heard some things from the beauty community about this. I've heard that the formula is not all that. Every review that I've seen or people that I've seen talk about it, they just said the formula was not it. And I've actually seen this palette on sale for a while now. Like it's been on sale for a long time and they still haven't gotten rid of it. The color story is cute, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little tempting for $29, but I'm pretty sure I have all these colors already in my makeup collection. The color story is pretty basic. It has like your golds, it has your pinks. And then it just has like a, two unique shades. That like cool tone gray shade is kind of unique. I feel like no palette or very little palettes put cool tone shades like that. And that green shade is pretty interesting. Not a lot of palettes have green. 
but it is a shimmer. I feel like matte greens are more rare than shimmery glitter greens. So yeah, overall, I think the color story is pretty cute. Formula-wise, might not be the best, but if I didn't have these colors, maybe I'd take the risk and get it. Last thing by Fenty Beauty. This is their Avalanche All Over Metallic Powder Set. Now, this is supposed to be a metallic pigment, pigment for eyes, cheeks, and lips. Mm, I could see why this is on sale. I don't think this is appealing to the average makeup consumer. I don't even think it's appealing to like people really in the beauty community, online beauty community. It's just a product that is kind of complicated to work with. Like, I don't think people typically apply powders on their lips. However, if you want a like shade you don't have, going in with your eyeshadows and then applying just a clear gloss over it, you can get like any color you want. But I don't think people like either know about that or just are down to do it because it is a little complicated and you kind of have to finesse it to make it look good. But yeah, this product, like I said, the color story, first of all, is like they could have came out with better colors. Some of these are a little like too cool toned. I can't imagine putting in like the gray and the green on your cheeks. Like none of these are will look good on your lips or on your cheeks. A lot of these would just look good like on the eyes. So yeah, I could definitely tell why this is on sale. Next thing I have is this Becca Chill and Glow Setting Powder and Lip Gloss Duo. So the powder is their Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. And then the gloss is a gloss that brings out the natural beauty of your lips with pH technology blooming into the perfect shade. This universal shade knows your perfect pink. Oh my god. First of all, Becca throws in this Hydra Mist powder in every single kit. They also have sent this powder a bunch to like BoxyCharm and like subscription boxes. And I've also seen it on sale at like Nordstrom Rack or something. So they're trying to get rid of that powder. And also that gloss. I don't like stuff that changes with your skin tone. I don't ever think it's like accurate. I think it just always changes into like a pink that like, you know, pinks match with like everyone. So also that powder I actually have and I don't really like it. Wherever you apply it, it darkens up. It almost like oxidizes either your concealer or foundation. The finish is really nice and it doesn't cake up. It does look good on the skin. However, it changes the color of your makeup and that is a big no for me. Like, it basically ruins wherever you apply it. I think they need to reformulate that product because the idea of it sounds really good. It is like a very high amount of water and it, like I said, it doesn't cake up. It looks good on the skin. They just need to get rid of the fact that it oxidizes. Next thing that is on sale is the Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dream Eyeshadow Palette. This palette is really cute. I like the color story. However, I have all those colors already in like my palette collection. I already have like all three Norvina palettes. So I basically have like every rainbow color there is. I don't really need to be going out to get like bright colors anymore. I've heard good things about Lunar Beauty. I've heard their formula is good. And honestly, this palette looks well thought out. I think this is on sale because the average consumer that is not like involved in like the whole beauty guru world doesn't know who Manny MUA is. So they're really not checking for it. This only has 54 reviews on Sephora. So I assume it hasn't been selling too well. Let's talk about Natasha Denona. She had a couple items that were on sale and one of them I did buy and the others really did tempt me. So let's talk about the palettes first. So her Tropic Eyeshadow Palette 
and her Safari All Matte Palette are half off. I was tempted to get these. I was real tempted to get these. Like, I wanted them. Why? Because I have a couple of the Natasha Denona palettes. I'm actually wearing her Metropolitan palette right now. And I like it. It's really easy to work with. You don't have to go in with a lot of product. You barely have to dip into it. And, like, you're good. So I like the Natasha Denona formula. And these palettes are really pretty. Especially the Tropic Eyeshadow palette. I'm... I love a good, just like, vibrant palette. I love color. And this one just spoke to me. It's beautiful. The shimmers are everything. But I was smart. And before I clicked purchase, I went into my makeup collection. And I just started swatching colors that I thought were similar to this eyeshadow palette. And I kid you not, I had all the swatches on my hand and they perfectly matched her palette. I went in with like my Norvina palettes, the Blue Blood palette, and some of my neutral palettes and I was basically able to dupe this whole palette with my makeup collection. So I did not need to spend the money because I already had these colors somewhere scattered in my makeup collection. Do I like it? Yes. Is the packaging sickening? Yes. I'm a sucker for high-end packaging, and I love this, like, bright blue plastic eyeshadow palette, but I don't need it. I don't need it. The other palette, the Safari All Matte Palette, really called to me because I like the idea of an All Matte Palette. I feel like I'm pretty stocked on shimmers. I did a bad thing and got basically all the uh, Pat McGrath palettes because her shimmers are sickening. They are literally like out of this world. They look wet on the eyes and I've never seen a shimmer like a Pat McGrath shimmer. And whenever I wanna use a shimmer on my eye, I'll go in to like my Pat McGrath palettes and I'll pick out a shimmer from there. So the idea of a matte palette caught my attention, especially because there's a whole row of cool tone colors, which I don't have that much. and. I don't think are available right now as much in the beauty community. I feel like warm colors are what's currently in. But the other half of the palette are more just like basic warm colors that I have throughout my makeup collection. If this just continues to stay on sale and I, I'm still interested in these Natasha Denona palettes, I'm more likely to go in and get this one because of the cool tone colors. But as of right now, I think I'm pretty set with what I have. And I don't need it, I don't need it. I want it, but I don't need it. Next Natasha Denona thing, this is what I got. I had to get it, I just had to get it. It's the Natasha Denona Diamond and Blush Palette. This comes with a cream highlighter, a cream blush, a duochrome blush, a regular blush, a regular highlighter it has a total of six different colors the reason why this got me and I had to get it first of all it's $90 and it's on sale for 50% off the marketing pictures they used for this absolutely stunning stunning like they're ridiculously beautiful also I have one cream highlighter and I love cream highlighters so I need more cream highlighters I also have like three powdered highlighters so like I'm not really stocked with that I love the duochrome highlight so yeah that is why I got it because of the cream products in there the package is also sickening it's so beautiful it's like a baby pink palette I also would have entertained the idea of buying this full price like this is something I'm interested in. I would, I didn't just buy it because it's on sale. This also has 233 reviews and it has almost five stars. It's like four and three quarter stars. So I feel like it's a pretty solid product that I'm going to love. And the last item 
by Natasha Denona is this Glow Gold Highlight Duo. This highlight duo is beautiful for deeper skin tones, not for me. The second one is too gold. I feel like it'd just be sitting on my skin and I already have a gold highlight like that in my Pat McGrath highlight trio that I don't need. The lighter gold is way more suitable for my skin tone, but I still feel like it wouldn't be popping because it would almost just blend in with my like gold undertone. But yeah, I wouldn't buy this even though it's $25. I wouldn't just buy it for one highlighter. I would have to really like both. But I think this is really cute for someone that is a little bit deeper. Okay, these next two just also just almost had me. I would have actually bought one of these if it wasn't for a review. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Glaze All Over Foil Luminizer in the like white shade. And also there's one available that's on sale too in the golden copper shade. The golden copper shade has basically three and a half stars and it's cheaper, it's $29.50. I think it's because this one is more of a chunky highlighter. A lot of the reviews saying it was very glittery, it wasn't skin-like and I don't like highlighters like that. That I'm not about that. I like highlighters that give me a glow from within and don't just sit on my skin. So that was immediately a pass for me once I saw reviews that it was just like chunky. But the white one has actually five stars and people love it. The thing that got me about this highlighter though and convinced me to not get it is a review that said that from the front it has like a silver cast. And I don't like that at all. I don't, like I said, I like my highlighters to just be glow from within and not sit on my skin. However, people were saying that this highlighter is really beautiful for pale skin tones. And also, this is not glittery like the other one. People were saying that this really just did look good on the skin and gave you a more glow from within. But I don't like the fact that it has like the silver tones in it. That might fit better for someone with paler skin and give you more of a blinding highlight. But on me, it just doesn't go with my gold yellow undertones. For someone that's pale, I think this is a steal. It's $34. The pans are huge. Like you will never finish that highlighter. It's the same packaging from their Omega bronzers. And look at how big this is. Like this is like a good chunk of my head. And the pan is big too. So I wish there was like a more gold tone highlighter from Marc Jacobs. If there was and it was on sale, I would definitely pick it up. Okay. Now this palette, I could tell why it was on sale. They needed to get rid of this. This is Givenchy's Red Edition eyeshadow palette. And it has three stars and 11 reviews. So this is not a good palette. The color story, it's... It's so basic. The pans look so small. I saw some reviews that the pans were really small. It's not just the pictures, that they're actually tiny. The eyeshadows in the center that have the like Givenchy logo, I feel like that's so hard to like go in with. I feel like it's probably so thin and it won't put an even amount of shadow on your whole brush. I feel like that's a problem. It's gonna apply kind of patchy. The formula is also probably not great. I feel like high end, like really high end. I mean like Givenchy, Marc Jacobs, Chanel, Tom Ford, like designer eyeshadows are really not all that. Like I feel like they're kind of like underwhelming, especially for the price. Like if you pay $90 for this eyeshadow palette, I feel like you were just like not about it. And even for $67, I'd still not be about it. The packaging is cute, but this looks tiny and so not worth the money. For $67, I would rather get like a Natasha Denote, like either her Sunrise palette or her Sunset palette, one of those like $60 ones, or her Love palette that are like originally $60, 
or I just like cop one of the Safari or the Tropical palette that is currently on sale for like $80 and actually get like full size pans and good quality shimmers. I think all these colors are like mostly shimmers too. There's like two mattes in here. Yeah, this is so underwhelming and they're just trying to get rid of this. Okay, that is it for today's video. I still have a couple items that I start, but like they're boring. I They're not interesting. You probably don't want to hear about them. Overall, I was able to find some cute things on the Sephora sales section. I'm glad I went in and found the blush and highlight palette because that's actually something I don't have in my collection and that I was really interested and would buy even if it wasn't on sale. But now that the fact that it was on sale and I got it for half off, that makes me really happy and I'm excited to try that out. Other than that, there were a lot of random designer high-end makeup in the sales section that like didn't grab my attention. But overall, the sales section wasn't too bad. You could find some just random products you might fall in love with. But like I said, they're just trying to get rid of products that probably aren't selling well or the products that you wouldn't buy at the initial price. Like I feel like the Natasha Denona palettes, they are not a, too appealing to the average makeup buyer. Like the average makeup buyer is not gonna go in with like vibrant, bold colors or like just an all matte palette. That's not what the average makeup consumer wants. Then you have them for sale at $130 and it's just like a hard no for a lot of people. But when you put them at $90, you really make people think about if they want them or not. And that's what they, they almost got me. But good thing I went in and swatched them in my makeup collection and found pretty much dupes for all of them. But other than that, I had fun filming this video. And I'm actually going to film one for Ulta. And Ulta's was a whole different mess, like a whole different mess. But I don't want to spoil that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.